No matter where you grew up, there's always at least one girl like Courtney Babcock. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is Subliteral Network. Uh, I make art and comics, and thanks for watching. Remember to hit like and subscribe, and to leave your feedback in the comments. Uh, now, I post art daily, five days a week, on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. And this is our roundup of that work, in case you missed it, with a little more uh, detailed description added. You can read my comic, Una the Cave Bunny, free at radiocomics.com. And uh, please visit my Patreon page if you'd like to support my work. And all these links are in my description and bio. And uh, but please watch till the end so you don't miss anything. This one started out as a pencil drawing on some laser paper, which I uh, then uh, finished off in um, technical uh, pen liners and some Sharpies. Now, this is the whole painting, which I didn't post uh, on Instagram because they, they took, they wanted me to take down a bunch of stuff that I had posted, like three or four uh, pictures, and they were pretty tame, and I didn't get it, but I, the only thing I could figure was that because I had kind of posted some uh, like children's art to my same uh, account, that that made the bots, like, I don't know, blow a gasket or something. And so they said, you know, this, that, and the other thing was inappropriate. So I only posted the head. Um, I didn't, I was a little taken aback because uh, I, I haven't been asked to take any art down uh, ever until now. And uh, my stuff is pretty tame compared to, you know, a lot of the work that you see, especially on Instagram. Um, I don't know, I guess the bots have to do something because it didn't seem like the selection of art seemed so arbitrary that it just sort of seemed like a some kind of a artificial and eyes were looking at it and picking up clumps of, of color and determining what was what shouldn't be up on his on Instagram based on uh, machine learning type stuff it didn't seem like a person had looked at it to me but it bothered me but this is the complete art and this is how I wanted to post it. And uh, I don't know, I guess it depends on how hard they come down on me, whether I keep uh, posting full pieces of art like this or uh, self-censoring, which I don't really want to do, but it's a public forum and I guess I have to think about it. You know, I, I post stuff uncensored on my Patreon page and that is at least something that I can, I mean, you know, my work is available. It, it may be censored here or censored there, but, you know, if you want to see it, it is available in uh, uncensored versions. When I imported it into my tablet and started uh, painting in Sketchbook Pro, I, by this time, I wanted to tr keep, to start trying different uh, lighting techniques and just sort of different things that I had seen. So I was really pushing it and kind of going for uh, unusual effects and uh, uh, some uh, unusual skin colors and stuff that I wasn't really doing. Uh, I think I left the hair purple like that. There was a purple color in the background, which I just left. And by the time I got to the hair, I said, I'm just going to leave it that way. And one thing that I did was to, you see that reflection on the eyeball? Sometimes you'll see that on a person's eyeball if they're standing in an, like an indirect light and there's like blue sky above them. And, I've always wanted to try that, and I think it came out really kind of nice here. I'm gonna once I once I realized I could get a nice effect like that, uh, I just put it in my library and said I gotta do this again. So whenever I have an opportunity, if I don't feel it's real repetitive, I will put that reflective thing on the eyeball, and it's something that you see and usually you don't register, but when you see it in a piece of art, you say to yourself. You know, I've seen that before. It has an air of reality. And that is uh, one of the reasons I like to experiment with stuff that I haven't done before. I don't draw uh, an octopus a lot, but uh, when I do, I'm always surprised at how much fun I have uh, doing it. So this is an ink drawing on Bristol board that uh, I just trimmed it down and uh, threw a few uh, colors on it in Photoshop. I'm glad I don't particularly have a octopus phobia because they are extremely weird creatures and from certain angles like this one I picked they look like just towering horrifying intelligent aliens or something they are one of the oddest creatures 
uh, and when I'm reading H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, which I read a lot of, it's just so easy to get that hideous alien effect with something as weird looking as an octopus. Uh, there's those eyes look out, but they're completely inhuman eyes, and they have that, you know, they have a head and a f kind of a face, and it just, uh, they really look like they're thinking something. Although, people say they're very intelligent creatures, uh, for undersea creatures, and they may be one of the smartest animals on the earth in general. Uh, who knows, they might be. Okay, there's a reason I only posted this half of this drawing, but I'll get to that in a second. This is Lana Lang, who in her Insect Queen guise, uh, when she was in the old Superboy comics, you can see that uh, ring on her hand, it gives her, uh, a dying alien gave it to her. She got shape, uh, insect powers from it, and it was kind of a cute little outfit. It was like, kind of like maybe colored like a wasp, but sort of black, black stripes and yellow. And the reason that I didn't show the head is because I couldn't make it work. I drew this head and it came out awful. And then, like a dummy, I said, okay, I'll fix it in the inks. So I inked it and it ended up looking the same. So I redrew it and put the new face on there and it still looked terrible. You know, there's kind of a tip that I would give to people that I still break, but I don't do it so much anymore. I don't break it so much anymore. Go over your pencils before you start inking. Just make sure that your work is right before you uh, make it permanent. Uh, and this is, a, is an example of what happens when you don't do that. You got a piece of work that you can't really show because look at all the detail. I got bugs flying in the background. I got plants. I got all kinds of hatching in there and I can't really show the piece because the head is just inexcusable. Which brings me to something I'm learning about making comics is that it's the same process. If you want to be fast, you've got to be accurate. So, so you don't have to go back and fix mistakes or you don't produce bad art. And one of the things I found that helps me to be accurate is to break things down into stages, make sure each stage is correct from layout, then to uh, a more detailed sketching, then to a detailed pencil, and then to the inks. Each, if each stage is right, you're not redoing something you're not redoing the work uh, over and over again. And as a consequence, that can sort of, in a way, artificially make you faster uh, by making fewer mistakes. And I think that that is something that, uh, I've been kind of studying a lot of the Japanese uh, uh, comic artists. And one guy in particular, Akihito Yoshitomi, uh, just has a brilliant strategy for uh, preserving his energy so that he can put the same amount of work into art day after day but and I learned that thing about breaking the piece into the stages from him this is the mouse knight from that portion of the other painting that I showed last week recently I've been doing everything except watercolor uh, but there was a time when I did just almost exclusively watercolor paintings most notably when I was trying to really build up my uh, children's art portfolio. Later on, what I would do with watercolor is to, you, know, you lay down some color first, you let that dry, and then I'd lightly hit it with a little fixative so I could go over the top of it with uh, another color or even a kind of a deeper layer of the same color and just start getting really brilliant effects without disturbing the layer underneath. Because, you know, watercolor, if you put more water on top of it, it's just going to lift it up and make it run. Fixative would stop that from happening, and so I could theoretically layer about as many layers of paint and color over the top. So I was just getting these bizarre, brilliant effects that looked like uh, watercolor dyes, or I was using some kind of uh, fluorescent paint. Courtney Babcock from uh, Paranorman, drawn in um, ink and Sharpie on uh, cardstock, and you're not going to see uh, many uh, animated characters like uh, Courtney Babcock anymore. Uh, I think that she has, she wasn't presented as some kind of ideal girl. She wasn't exactly pretty, but she was, and she had no redeeming personality traits at all. But she was kind of cute and chunky, and, and she looked like as just sort of a, a girl who's kind of, kind of good looking, but not really 100% mature. And she has flaws and, and, and rough edges uh, in her design. And I think that's 
in a way, that's what makes you think that she has some reality. Because she's not perfect. And she's also kind of sexy and attractive in sort of her own way. I, um, I love her design. And I love... Also, one thing in the movie that's kind of cool is that if you look at her mother in the movie, she kind of looks like a broken down version of Courtney. You could kind of see where, you know, a lifetime of cigarettes and booze and, and watching TV can kind of change you from kind of attractive into uh, really not so attractive. I still like her, though. She's talking on her phone. She's snapping gum. She's playing Mean Girl uh, games with her friends and her frenemies. And she's got like a big wide butt and, and this... Uh, open midriff top and stuff, and a pierced, uh, uh, pierced navel, um, and she presents herself as kind of someone who's being kind of all that, but she's not. Maybe in her little small town she is, but it, it, there's just some there's just some great character revelation there when somebody thinks they're so great, but the audience knows that they're not so great. Uh, you you kind of have a certain sympathy for them while really not liking them uh, in a lot of ways.